Thursday, two games only. Let's break down what we need to break down out of all of that action. Any news we've got as well as Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and Jeff from Curb Your Enthusiasm is really just modern day Norm from Cheers. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble, on TikTok at redrock underscore beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. So go ahead and thumb it up, subscribe, bell, comments. Getting closer to the end of the regular season, but we're still rolling. We're still rolling. We've got two games on Thursday. Feels like just a really weird day. Two games starting at the same time, basically. So everything's over really, really quickly. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about what we need to talk about. We're going to give some updates on some injuries. And we'll start by looking at uh, the bad teams. Because we got some expected updates, I guess, with the Blazers, with uh, Jeremy Grant, the Ides of March, doubtful. Anthony Simons out. But Matisse Thibel and Deonor Ayton, questionable. Now, they've been questionable every game for the last four or five games. So I don't think this guarantees that they're playing at all. It's frustrating that it doesn't actually give us clarity on it. But that's where we're sitting. Jordan Clarkson, you'd be shocked to know, is out again. Larry Markkinen is questionable. He's played two in a row. That's a lot. We'll see whether Markkinen's able to go for this one. I don't know that he will. But the frustration of this continues as well as it does in Detroit. Because not only is Fontecchio out, we know that. But both Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey are now questionable. Cade missed two in a row. He came back. Ivy missed. Now they're both questionable. So the frustration, and this is again, maybe I am, what's the right term for it? A confirmation bias where I thought that the clause in the player participation policy might end up causing us to have situations where not that we have um, less guys getting fake injured, but less clarity around when they're in and when they're out. And that seems to be how it is. But again, maybe that's confirmation bias. Because while it's easy to say, well, yeah, Markkinen hasn't been shut down. Sure, he's playing one game in three weeks. Is Aiton shut down? Not really. He's questionable every day. We're at Simons. We haven't heard anything. All right? So it is really hard to... I don't know if this is a, a big positive or a big... A big ne- I feel at the moment, I feel like it's a negative because you just don't know. We don't know what's happening with Grant or Simons or Aiton. Like, how does it really benefit the experience of the fans? Like, oh, maybe Jeremy's back today. Maybe we get to see Jeremy Grant out there. Oh, it's a shame. He just didn't quite make it back from the doubtful designation. Oh, well, maybe next time. I don't, does that help anybody? It doesn't help us from a fantasy perspective. Not that the NBA cares about that, but they're about trying to make things better for the fans. And I don't know that it's doing that. Again, we'll assess all of this at the end of the year. But I'm not sure that this tanking shutdown stuff, again, with a draft that's weak as well, I'm not sure it's been a huge improvement. We'll find out. We finally got confirmation. It's been out since January that Lamelo Ball's done for the year. Thanks for the timely update. Still nothing on Mark Williams, though. Don't know whether he's out for the year. He is, but we don't. We don't know. We know Seth Curry and Cody Martin are out. And the other one is Shea Gudis Alexander. I thought maybe he was sitting out that game because it was the back-to-back. He did have the problem, but he's doubtful again. Not a great time to have that for fantasy managers. Obviously, Shea is a top three player all season, been relatively healthy all year, and now missing time. One of those, or two years ago, when people were so, um, so adamantly against Shea, I'm never drafting him. The Thunder shut him down all the time. I believe that in the fantasy playoffs that year, he was like the third-ranked player overall by, by totals, and now he's doing the opposite. He's been great all year, and now you get to the playoffs, and now he's like dropping a little bit of production and now missing games. So, yeah, a little bit frustrating there. We don't really know what time frame there is on, on Shea and returning, but we do know he's doubtful. What this does mean is that you should get maybe more Isaiah Joe, but it could be more Aaron Wiggins. It could be more Casey Wallace, who will start... We got a big opportunity for Josh Giddy in that situation as well, which is what we saw um, in the last game. 
What about some waiver wire trends? Who's been added? Who's been dropped? A lot of that is just to do with getting guys in on Thursday. And you're going to have a lot of value in getting guys in on Saturday as well. The Saturday teams are uh, New Orleans, or the, for the play today, Boston, Atlanta, New Orleans, Milwaukee, plus Memphis and Orlando. They're the teams that play on Saturday. So that's where you're streaming in. So in terms of having a look at waiver wire ads, number one was Vit Krejci, who was up 36% for the Atlanta Hawks. Number two is Slam and Sammy Hauser, up 28 Bruno Fernando up 17, Leaky Beasley up 15, Garrison Matthews up 9, and Peyton Pritchard up 8. We didn't have many guys to choose from today, did we? And we saw some of the issues. We'll talk about it when we get to the Celtics game about Pritchard and the minutes, what happens when the guards and the, the starters are all healthy. So it is a frustrating scenario um, in terms of trying to get those guys in, but that's who everyone added. Rightfully so. You made the right choices to do that. In terms of guys being dropped, Rashawn Holmes is the number one player being dropped. He's out for tomorrow's game. I would 100% drop him and I would 100% add Marvin Bagley because I would have guessed that Bagley is going to start and put up pretty useful numbers. Keon Ellis has been dropped in a lot of spots. I guess he didn't deliver enough steals. He didn't. He had zero in the last one. Um, I still think that maybe you can consider him. But again, on a 12-game day, would you even start him? Probably not. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Chris Murray. Yep. Did absolutely nothing. Move on from him. Jaden Ivey has been struggling. He's been out. People moved on. Completely get it. Jordy Clarkson, the man on the street, down 7%. Not playing. What's he played one game in three weeks? And Santi Aldama, who was starting to put together a really consistent run, and in the last two games, he's been absolutely marginalized. Now, I would have held on to Santi because they play on Saturday, and like I said, nobody else does. So unless you're dropping him to get a Celtics guy in, I don't think I would have done that. That seems a little short-sighted, but people make short-sighted moves all the time in fantasy. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners over at eBay Motors have partnered with me all season to help you bring or help bring you some of the best fantasy picks. So when you're out there scouring the waiver wire, assembling your championship roster, we're going to find those players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. We talked about it already. People are dropping Rashawn Holmes, and that's because he's injured. That means Marvin Bagley is back on the menu. Bagley has his limitations. We know there's not a good defensive stats guy, not a good free throw player, but high field goals, good scoring, good rebounds, big opportunity down the stretch here. He could be playing 30 minutes a night. He could be getting you a double-double. He might even chuck in a block on 60% shooting. And that's all we're trying to find at this point of the year. Someone who's going to give you, even if it's a three to four game bump, someone who's going to give you that value. So I'm looking at Bagley as a solid option with the Rashawn Holmes injury. Hopefully that sort of move bumps you into contention or or through to your fantasy championship. eBay Motors knows that a championship team is about each player being that perfect fit. And it's the same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever it is that your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, it is guaranteed to fit your ride every time, the first time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber and not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to US customers. Eligible items only and exclusions apply. Okay. All right. First game. Get straight into it. It is the Boston Celtics and the Atlanta Hawks. There was a lineup change here for the Celtics because Drew Holiday was finally back. So he started over Sam Hauser while Maximum Derek White returned and Al Horford had the game off on a non-back-to-back. So the resting still continues for Boston. Didn't do them much good. Well, for the short term, long term, I think it'll be fine. But they lose again to the Atlanta Hawks. 123-122 in overtime is your final score. What we wanted to find out in this game is, I know there's been a lot of talk. I've mentioned it as well. Quite a bit. But there's been a lot of talk about how Peyton Pritchard's going to be this awesome fantasy guy down the stretch. Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll start with him. He had 19 minutes for four points. This was the problem, though. This was the concern, is that when they had a healthy backcourt, how much would he play? And the answer is really not at all. And we'd seen it for 80% of the season, is that when Holiday and White are there, there's not enough for him to do. And what do you do with this now? Now, obviously, the Celtics do play again on Saturday. There probably are going to be resting guys throughout the final two weeks of the season as well. But both him and Hauser, we copped a bit of a reality check on their production of their minutes. Hauser played 23. He had 8, 2, and 3 with two triples. And obviously, on their own, isolated, they're not 12-team league numbers. And it does now appear that we do need Drew or White out. Maybe 
another starter as well for both of these guys to be 12-team usable. Horford was out. Didn't really change a huge amount. We had 13 Luke Cornette minutes. But what we did get, and I can't believe we did get this, 41 minutes of Christos Porzingis. 20 and 7 with three blocks. Drew Holiday's first game back, 37 minutes. 13, 7 and 5, a steal and a block. Jalen Brown, 18 points, four assists, two steals, two blocks. Jason, Jason Clutch Tatum had 31, 13 and 6 on really horrific 41% shooting, but 85 from the line is awesome. And maximum Derek White had 22, 7 and 5. Big numbers from those guys. Just the guys that you look to stream in Pritchard and Hauser did nothing. And Cornette had four points on the Hawks. What an absolutely gigantic game from DeJounte Murray, including the game-winning shot. He played a ridiculous 47 minutes. He took a ridiculous 44 shots, and he scored 44 points. He had six threes, seven rebounds, seven assists, two steals, and a block. Continues his run as a top five player over the last two to three weeks. What happens with him in the offseason or, or Trey or fantasy values for these guys is so up in the air. Because obviously Murray wasn't a top 20 player. and well, he's, he's still not. He's like the 33rd ranked player for the season, DeJounte Murray. He was like outside the top 40 for most of the year when Trey was there. And now he's running like a top five guy. Very similar to when he was in San Antonio when it was him and nobody else and he did everything. Now, obviously he got them the win here and he's putting up great numbers, but... I don't think that's something that translates right across to all of next season. We've got 43 minutes from Bogdan Bogdanovich, who had 24, 7, and 5 with two threes. And we've got 33 out of Clint Capella, who had 12 and 13 with two blocks. But the problem with this team, understanding how good their schedule is with all the low-volume days coming up, is that what if Jalen returns, or Trey Young returns, or Kongwu returns, or Bufkin returns? Who, like, where do they fit in? Who loses all this value? Because DeAndre Hunter played 40 minutes and he had a pretty DeAndre Hunter game. Again, you look at it, it's one of those ones where you go, man, DeAndre Hunter killed it. 21 and 13 with five triples. What a game from the big fella. And then he had one assist, zero steals, zero blocks. Somehow missed all three of his free throws, but went 50% from the field. Is that a win or not? I don't actually know. He is so bad from a category perspective. You've got to roster him, obviously, but he just cannot do enough in enough areas for it to matter. If you chased adding Garrison Matthews, you got seven points in 17 minutes because that was never going to repeat. The other thing that's really interesting is that we saw Vic Krejci play a lot of minutes. He had foul trouble, but he played 35 and he put up a robust two, three, and one. The value of having Vic Krejci was just to try and get some extra games in. So if you did have him for this game, I'm guessing part of the reason you do have him for this game is because you want to have him again on Saturday. But dropping him after this game just to add someone different on Saturday completely defeats the whole purpose of this. So while it's not ideal to hold on to him, it was to get 70 minutes of action for one waiver move. And yeah, the first 35 of them were dreadful. But I think you've got to hold the, hold the track. It is difficult to do, though. I get that. Wes Matthews didn't play yesterday, but he got 24 minutes here. He had three points with three assists, a steal and a block, and shot poorly, and not much else. Trent Forrest. Someone asked me a question about whether you do Trent Forrest or Vic Krejci today. You always go for the guy whose role feels guaranteed. Not that you know, Forrest still had four points, but he played six minutes. Uh, and Krejci just got that way more opportunity. Now we wait to see what happens with Jalen Johnson, with Nyoka Okongwu, with Trey Young, and with those other guys who could really you know, change a lot of the, the outcomes of this squad. Today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to find those professionals that you need faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn is a vast network of over a billion professionals. So you can get your ad out there in the wild for all of those professionals to sniff it out and bring the best candidates to you. Hiring is easy when you've got that broad of a range of candidates and people who are small business owners report that getting a qualified candidate for their job happens 86% of the time within the first 24 hours when using LinkedIn jobs. It makes it so much easier. They're constantly finding ways to make that process easier, including the way that they can help you write job descriptions, making that process so much faster, so much easier because you don't have that time to sit there and be meticulous all the time as a small business owner. So many different things to do. There are two and a half million small businesses using LinkedIn for hiring at the moment. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The second game of the day was the New Orleans Pelicans knocking off the Milwaukee Bucks 107-100, the final score. 
Let's talk about Damian Lillard first. He appeared to hurt his leg a couple of times. At halftime, he was very heavily limping, going back into the locker room. He was fine in terms of he was able to start the second half and all good. And then about halfway through the third quarter, he went to the locker room again, spent some time in there, came back out, was on the bike, did return to the game. But obviously, we need to pay attention. We need to watch that. Lillard ended up playing 36 minutes. He had 20 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists, shot 50%. Weirdly, 1 of 3 from the line. But we just got to watch that leg. Yanni dropped to 35 and 14 on horrific free throws, but excellent field goals. And Leaky Beasley. What a 3-point streamer he's been. 20 points, 6 dribbles, nothing much else. 2 rebounds, 0 assists, and a block. But a great stream option. It's great that Chris Middleton's back. It's great that he's playing big minutes, 33 of them here. But man, what a brutal run. I think that is 3 games that are of under 30% shooting. He had 7, 8, and 6 on 25%. That kills you. But the other stuff is good, and at least he's back. While Punch Bob got into foul trouble, Bobby Portis, 5 and 7 for him in 16 minutes, which is not a great result. Brook Lopez, the blocks are really good. The 37 minutes are encouraging, and he got those extra minutes because Portis was in foul trouble. But the offense for him has disappeared. 40% shooting, 5 attempts, didn't hit free throws. Obviously, we're still holding Brook Lopez because the schedule is really strong. But once you get into a points league scenario after Saturday, not sure you need to hold. He doesn't do enough. And it's been a consistent thing for about the last two months. So not ideal. Pat Beverly played seven minutes. Cool, good for him. Lucky he announced he was playing on his podcast. For the Pelicans, Herbalife Jones, 37 minutes. He did have some early foul trouble, but he racked up the defensive numbers. Four steals and three blocks. Now we know that those aren't as highly valued in a points league. He's only 140th in points leagues this season. We obviously have been rostering him for a long period of time. And in points leagues, we do it because of the schedule. But once we head into next week, if you want to switch it out for somebody else, it's totally okay. Ken Murphy shot poorly, 31% only, but he did have 15, 11, and 5 with two steals. While CJ McCollum also shot poorly, but he was better than Dame, I thought, in this game overall. He had 25, 7, and 7, uh, three triples, 39 minutes. Speaking of shooting poorly, Zion and the free throw line was bad. But 28 points, five rebounds, two assists. You would like a little bit more in terms of peripherals. But then he goes the line, 63% on 16 attempts. That is what kills you, that volume, going 10 of 16. But he was 60% from the field, good overall numbers. The bad side of the things here for the Pelicans, well, Najee Marshall was scoreless. He missed all four of his shots. He played 23 minutes. You couldn't really ask for much more than that, just horrific production. But what we did get was good Larry Nance. Well, this is good for Larry Nance. Nine and seven, three assists and three steals. These are the sort of things that you try to accumulate over this six quality game stretch in like 10 days, whatever it was for the Pelicans. Not every game has been good. This is solid. We also finally got a good Jonas Valanciunas game. 23 minutes, 17 and 10, a triple one, 54%. He had been horrific. He'd barely played 20 minutes in any game. This one always shaped as maybe there was a chance for more minutes going up against Giannis, going up against Lopez. And it did pan out that way. We still hold Jonas through to Saturday, and then we can make another assessment after that as to whether he does become a drop, or if it's just a matchup thing and we have to look at, you know, much like we did with Drummond and Vooch and the Bulls, we have to look at who they're playing against, whether it makes sense for more Valen Shooters minutes than what we have been getting in a lot of these cases. That'll bring us, with only the two games on, that'll bring us through to the monstrous line of the night. Not a lot to talk about with these ones because there just wasn't many guys there, but I'm pretty sure you know who the Monstrous is going to be. It is, of course, DeJounte Murray with 44, 7, and 7. Yeah, bad shooting, but that's fine. We'll give him the award. The waiver wire line of the night, the best performance from a bloke who is widely available, 50% available on the waiver wire. We are going to head to Larry Nance, who had 9 and 7. He had 3 assists and he had 3 steals. Widely available, really good production from Larry. I'll be honest with you. I don't think there's... I'm not well, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing a young gun of the night. Do you want me to give it to Jordan Hawkins? as two points in 15 minutes. AJ Green's um, two trillion. Who else could I give it to as a second-year player? I think that's it. First or second. That's it. They're the only guys that played. So I'm not doing it. We're just going straight through now to the dud of the night, the worst performer of the day, who is a highly rostered player. And of course, it's none other than your mate, Punch Bob, Bobby Porter's 15 minutes, 5.7 rebounds. Stinking night from him. Let's just round this show out. Looking at the top six performers of the day again. Not a huge amount of utility in this, I guess, with only the um, two games on. So some of the lists are a little uh, little weird, but we'll do it. DeJounte, number one. Derek White, number two. Jason Tatum at number three. Bogdan Bogdanovich, CJ McCollum, and Herb Jones. Round out your top five. 
Your top six under 50% rostered guys, Larry Nance at one, followed by Bruno Fernando, Luke Cornett, Wes Matthews, Sam Hauser, and Peyton Pritchard. Yeah, pretty rough stuff. Um, and then your top six points league guys, DeJounte at one, followed by Giannis, Jason Tatum, CJ McCollum, Herb Jones, and Ken Murphy the third. And that brings us to the end of a very short recap show. We are getting very close to the end of the regular season, guys. So keep on top of things. Keep watching the show. Keep subscribing or keep your subscription active, maybe. Don't unsubscribe on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up and pay attention to your team. Roto Leagues, you go right to the end of the year. Head-to-head leagues, I bloody hope you don't. But if you do, we're always going to be here all the way through trying to help uh, as best as I can. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. So yeah.